developed world is facing three big problems. Outsourcing of production, of industrial capability, uh, the technological revolution, essentially the computing and robotical revolutions, and the uh, aging of populations and uh, decrease in, uh, in rates of birth. So these three problems <laughs> together, if they happen separately, they would be difficult. When they happen together, which is what we have, it's a catastrophe. Because it strongly reduces the ability of creating jobs like we did in the past. Uh, what we have now is the new class of the working poor. It's a person who works full time, counts for the work uh, uh, statistics, but in reality is poor, cannot make ends meet. Uh, and that means the implications for the European Union is that it should, in perhaps people's expectations, it should have protected us either against these threats or should have been able to deal with these threats in a way that is beneficial to us. And it cannot. There is oversupply of steel production in, in China. China sells steel under the, the price of cost. Uh, are we going to produce more steel in Europe in these conditions? Mr. German Corbyn of, uh, of the Labour Party in the UK fighting for keeping a steel mill open to produce something that nobody needs. Uh, okay, this was okay in the time of the Soviet Union, you cannot do it anymore. The decrease in, in, in birth means that um, Europe needs immigration, especially for lower skilled jobs which nobody wants. Again, the problem, and this is not a, a problem of the European Union, this is a problem of the people that the European Union can hardly solve, which is people only want the advantages and nobody wants to deal with the disadvantages. For me, one of the issues in Brexit was the small-mindedness of the decision because of the, of the immigration. The, the UK has been a huge, uh, uh, has been hugely benefited from immigration, not only from incoming, but also from their own outgoing immigration. Immigration in the UK is not a problem at all, quite the opposite. But the difference between perception and reality is huge. What many times the European institutions cannot understand is that you cannot ignore people's expectations in human nature. And you cannot persuade people rationally of the advantages of a project. People have to believe in that project and see it as their own. And when they don't, they will treat the European Union like a cow. You just get the milk and until one day the cow is dry and it kills over. Um, that is, I mean, I'm not saying that I have a solution for that. I'm just saying that uh, European Union has, and Europe has to be, they have to be aware that this difference exists. In Europe, we have this official, almost official uh, line of thought, liberal, human rights, democracy, and all of this. Uh, and anyone, and then the human rights, especially gay rights and all of that, uh, all of those more complex issues or less specific issues. Um, and sometimes in the eyes of the mainstream press and the political establishment, anyone who is outside of that frame, it's treated with some condescendence, like, ah, you don't, this is too complex for you, no, you don't understand, this is, it's very complicated, don't worry, we, we're in charge, we'll take care of it, don't worry. And people feel left out. Uh, now, you can do this for some time, but after a certain period, the distance between the political mindset and the reality for most people in their lives and their jobs is so different, that décalage is so big, that then of course comes Geert Wilders and comes Marine Le Pen offering very simple solutions, as if solutions were simple, but that, for, my, for me, it's not their triumph, that is the loss, it's the defeat of the mainstream political system and the defeat of the mainstream press as well. These people, these loonies, only gain space because somebody gave them that space. Especially in a country like Germany, a country that has done, in my mind, a huge and, and amazing effort to confront its history, and they've done it very successfully, but also because of that, they're always very careful. I mean, Frau Merkel is the example of being careful. She's probably the most careful person in the world. But that has its limits, because when you are so, so careful and so measured, you end up saying what is already more or less agreed on. You don't really give an answer. You give a diplomatic, you give an acceptable answer. And for many people, this is not enough, especially the ones who are losing out. Uh, because what we have with these uh, 
global effects that I mentioned, you will have a greater degree of separation between the elites with know-how and the rest. And the rest will be bigger and bigger and bigger. And I mean, the scenarios, the technological scenarios are that at least half of the existing jobs can be replaced by machines. The technology exists today. It's not in the future. It's not space 1999. It's today. And more things are not happening only because of political will. Because if companies had their way, my friends, half of the working population would be on the streets by now. One of the issues about the European Union and Europe, <clears throat> both Europe and the European Union, is that we have an understanding of power as something purely functional. Power is supposed to deliver on these and these and these things. It's under scrutiny because we are a democracy. So the, elect, the, the, the voters demand from power. So it's, a, it's, a, it's sort of like a social agreement <clears throat> that uh, we elect uh, the power and power then is uh, responsible and is uh, subject to our evaluation. So it's more, we have this vision of power almost in a transactional way, like a contract. Uh, but power does not only have that dimension, power also has an almost spiritual, emotional dimension. And that is something that, for instance, you feel in Russia, uh, or you would feel in Turkey, or you would feel in the Arab world, that power has a greater dimension. It's something bigger than just simply, I do this for you, you vote for me. Uh, and that is why I think that uh, um, that emotional relation to the European Union does not exist in the majority of the European populations. Mm -hmm.